New Directions for Women presents From Addiction to Recovery, Inspirational Stories of Courage. My name is Kim and I'm an alcoholic. I had a great childhood, but my father was an alcoholic. Uh, but I remember doing a lot of fun things. We went camping and did stuff like that. My mother was the perfect Al-Anon. Um, it wasn't until my teen years that things started to get out of control. I, my first drink, I believe, was at 15, um, but it was sporadic. I didn't start my heavy drinking until my 20s, and that was after my mother died. And um, I was pregnant with my daughter, Melissa, and I didn't drink when I was pregnant with her, but it was when we moved to Apple Valley when we knew nobody. I used methamphetamine as well. And then when you're using that, you can drink a whole lot more. Um, I quit the methamphetamine and alcohol became my, my master. I drank a lot. I drank hard alcohol and I could handle my alcohol. Uh, Melissa was exposed to several different men. She was exposed to the chaos of the household because there was cops coming, there were men coming, there were cops looking for those men that were coming to the house. Uh, it was out of control. Uh, the end of my drinking, I was digging through trash cans looking for those empty bottles that still had that little bit of alcohol in it that I could pour water in and swish it around and get that last sip. She wasn't going to school because she was worried about what was happening to mom and who was going to be with mom or if mom was even going to be alive. I felt guilty and that guilt caused me to drink more. I have an older son that uh, lived between my house and my dad's house. My dad did get sober. He has 35 years of sobriety um, and he tried to rescue my son and not my daughter which caused a lot of resentment which made me feel even more angry more drinking more guilt um, and I was angry so um, I was angry at Melissa for not going to school because it interrupted my so-called partying it was just awful. It was awful. My dad knew the court liaison here at New Directions at the time, and the women and children's program had just opened the house across the street, and she kept saying, we have a bed, we have a bed, we have a bed, and I just wasn't ready. I had moved to Big Bear. I got arrested for smoking pot in my house, and they took me to jail, and they put my daughter in a foster home for the night. And I still wasn't ready. I knew where my booze was hidden. And when I got out of jail, I got home and I drank that bottle and I went to see that man instead of being home waiting for my daughter. And um, it was three months later that I just decided, you know what? I've lost everything. I had no place to live because the rent hadn't been paid. And I had that moment of clarity. And I picked up the phone and I called Cindy, who was that lady at the time. And um, she said, come on down. And I came on down and I looked at the place and I said, this is beautiful, I can do this. And I made that decision and I've never looked back. And it was a great place for my daughter and she was angry, and I was just telling Tanya that, um, you know, my proudest moment was when my daughter got on that bus to go to a school she's never known, a bus that she didn't know anybody, and take that ride on that bus. And it just, it broke my heart, but I was so, so proud of her that she did that, and I'm very proud of her today. And. It's been an amazing, an amazing journey. There's been some hard times lately, but it's been an amazing journey. And I'm so grateful to New Directions because they taught me, they taught me how to live life. And I have a life 
beyond my wildest dreams. I never thought that I would have the life that I have today because of New Directions. And I'm eternally grateful, eternally grateful to be a sober mom and to be a sober woman of Alcoholics Anonymous. It's, um, there's a lot of expectations. There's a lot of expectations. Um, my son remembers me as sober because he's older. He's seven years older than Melissa. So he remembers me before I started drinking and doing the meth. He's resentful that I even started, and he hangs on to that past. There's expectations and there's fear with my daughter that I'm going to relapse. It took a long, long time for her to trust me. Uh, I have a great job. I've been at the same job um, 14 years. Um, it started off as a get well job and it turned into a career. And uh, I have the trust of friends and my employers. Um, I make more money than I ever thought I would make. I have a brand new car that I never thought I would ever have a brand new car. I go to meetings every single day after work. I go to the same meeting that I've been going to since my sponsor picked me up here at New Directions, and it's the same meeting, same sponsor that I've been going to. And I just stay accountable. I stay accountable to my sponsor, to the friends that I met 14 years ago. Um, and you have to. I, I believe strongly that you have to. I believe strongly in that higher power, because without that higher power, I would have lost it a long time ago. Um, my sponsor taught me here when I was at New Directions to get on your knees and pray and thank God for another day of sobriety and I still do that today. And it was embarrassing when I was living in a room full of girls, you know, to do that. And, and I cried the first couple of years because I was so, so grateful for my sobriety. And that's what I do. And there's a woman in one of the meetings that says women do recover and women do recover and we can be women with dignity no matter what we did, you know, how many guys we slept with, no matter, you know, if, if we were the biggest whores in the world, we can still be women of dignity today. My son talks about the way I used to dress and the way I dress now, you know, and it's amazing. It's amazing. If there was one message I could say to a woman with children or who is even pregnant, don't give up because this does work. Just stick with it. Wait until the miracle happens. It'll happen. If you or a loved one are suffering from addiction, please call our Caring Admissions Counselors today at 1-800-93-WOMEN. That's 1-800-939-6636.